This round of questioning is going to be led off by Eli. Eli, election integrity is one of the most important aspects of maintaining our constitutional republic. What legislation would you support to enhance voter integrity, and do you feel that mail-in or absentee voting is a threat to that? Well, as we are all aware, election integrity is important, both on a national level, as we're concerned with the Democrats trying to yet again cheat our elections. What was it in 2016? Hillary Clinton said that we absolutely need to respect our election outcome, and we need to be sure Donald Trump is going to respect that. Donald Trump won by a landslide. Hillary Clinton, eh, he rigged it. So election integrity these days for 2020, they want to get mail-in ballots for every American. And if we're talking Democrats, they're going to want some dead Americans and some illegals to vote as well. The problem with mail-in ballots is it is no way to verify the identity. You do not register ahead of time with your identification the same way you do with an absentee ballot. However, in addition to what's been happening federally and nationally with our elections, we have an issue here in New Hampshire itself with our election integrity. We have establishments here in New Hampshire that are trying to deprive the voters the right to choose their Republican candidates to send up against Ann Custer. You've probably heard the fact that WMUR themselves have neglected to admit that there are four candidates in this race. Adam Sexton, on air, lied to all of New Hampshire and saying there are two candidates to choose from. He's refused to take my calls. He's refused to take the calls of those who support me and my volunteers. And I've heard that it's a very similar situation for good Matt over here. We need to ensure that we are protecting our elections, both federally and locally. We have allowed the media to corrupt this nation. And I am saying we need to say no more. The media's bias, the media's rigging of elections must end, and we need to have fair elections across America. I don't know what's wrong with Adam Sexton. Does he think that volunteer effort's not enough? Is for Adam Sexton only concerned with campaign finance? Is my campaign? We have thousands of hours of volunteers who put in their hard work and effort for what they believe in. Thank you. Eli, thank you. Matt? Uh, election integrity. Uh, it's funny, if I wanted to go in there and have a beer, I'd have to show an ID to buy a beer. Yet, if you went to the Democrat convention, you'd have to show ID to get in the building. But that's acceptable. If you want to buy Sudafed tonight before you go home, if you have a cold, you got to show ID. But yet, one of the most important things we do as Americans is vote. And it's just fine. Come on in, say who you are, and we'll just trust you. Um, absentee ballots, I have no issue with because that's, uh, in the pilot world, we call it a two-way positive transfer of control. I ask you for an absentee ballot, you send it to me, I send it back. So that's fine, I see nothing wrong with that. What I don't like is the mailing out of 8 million ballots to PO boxes and people who've been dead for 15 years and now these ballots are floating around. And then you have ballot harvesting where people go around and they pick up all these ballots and they just turn them in wholesale. And that is that is right for fraud. Last, uh, I believe last election cycle, um, they locked up a uh, postal worker who had several hundred ballots and he was actually modifying them. So, I mean, it's something that we have to really be careful of because the most important thing we do is vote. And I think part of it is we should, people should pay a penalty. If someone is convicted of voter fraud, they should, they should actually go to jail. I mean, if you make the penalty enough, then people won't, they won't take that chance. But absentee ballots, I have no problem with that. That's fine. And the wholesale mailing of ballots, absolutely not. And I agree with uh, my friend Eli. Uh, WMUR is really kind of putting the screws to him and I because they're acknowledging two candidates in a race. There was no polling done. There was no, they said, we don't meet the criteria. Well, he's a highly educated educator, <laughs> and I'm a retired colonel. So I don't know. We're both qualified, registered candidates. So I find it really funny that they just exclude people. And that's an example of the media putting their thumb on the scale. Don't let them do that. We're 1.4 million people in this state. We should be able to say no. Thanks. I would like to point out one thing, and that is that the Merrimack County GOP and YCN did not exclude either Matt or Eli. Did <laughs> not. All right, thank you, Matt. Lynn? So, um, can you guys hear me? Okay, there we go. So, 
my team and I have been going door to door for months now, knocking on folks' doors and um, meeting voters that are out there. And we go to a door, and we have this app everybody's familiar with, the Advantage app, and you knock on the door and you say, hi, is this Mrs. Smith? And they're like, no, Mrs. Smith moved two years ago. I'm Mr. Jones. And that is exactly why we cannot have mail-in ballots, because you're going to mail them to the people who don't live there. And so um, I have seen more error when I am out there and going door to door, knocking on doors, than I, you know, than I actually see the real people that live there. So that's problem number one. We can't have mail-in ballots because we can't verify and identify who really lives in that house. And you know, when folks are getting three ballots because they have three people identified and somebody died in the house or maybe somebody moved, now there's extra ballots in the house. I am a proponent, just like my uh, colleagues here, of absentee ballots. You know, it's a great system, it works well. I've been in the military for 34 years. When I sat over in Afghanistan, I voted by absentee ballot. There's a process, it's verifiable, and it works, and our votes get counted. And so there is no need to have another process such as mail-in ballots when we have a process for people, especially right now, who may not feel like going out to vote because they're afraid for COVID or maybe they're just you know wanting to protect themselves and they don't want to go to the polling station but they absolutely can request an absentee ballot. And I absolutely believe in voter ID. You should be able to, you should have to identify yourself when you go in to vote. And, and you, you know, you hit the nail right on the head. You have to show an ID to do just about everything else. And yet you don't have to have an ID to go in and vote. It's, it's an important, um, oh, I thought you were giving me time. It's an important, um, you know right that we have as individuals but it's not a right that you know i can take from somebody else and so we should be showing ids as well and i would support voter id from a national level thank you steve uh thank you uh, this is uh, near and dear to my heart because uh, when i was in a state house i sat on the election law committee and this was something that was talked about a lot look i'm not a big proponent of big government telling all the states how to vote right the states have the right and the obligation to determine how their, their people in their state vote. That's their job, and that's what should happen. The problem is, is you can't let Democrats take over the House, and you can't let Democrats take over the Senate, because they're gonna propose some craziness, like this mail-in ballot stuff, it's, it's nuts, right? Tim Lang, right there, Timmy, raise your hand. Tim is on the election law committee right now, and so they're fighting it as we, see, as we speak today. Look, as a federal office, I'm not a big proponent of telling all the states what to do. Do I believe that you should have an ID card or something to prove who you are? We fought very hard to determine domicile um, and where you live in residency when we were in the state house to try and offset some of the things that were happening at college towns. Right? I voted absentee the whole time I was in the service. It's not hard. It really isn't. But the rhetoric used to hear from the left is that you're being you're disenfranchised. I never heard that word before until I was in election law. I never knew what disenfranchised meant. The issue is, is that everybody has a right to vote. It's their God-given right to vote in this country. We need to protect the vote. I used to say at the well, we're not trying to prevent the vote. We're trying to protect the vote. Because one illegal vote cancels out my legal vote. And that's the problem. So the states, we want to fix the problem about voter integrity. You gotta win the House, you gotta win the Senate here in the state, and that's how you control it. It's not a federal mandate, and let's get out and vote and take the House back in the Senate, thanks. Steve, thank you. 